Hi, how's it going today? I um, wanted to talk a little bit about uh, some uh, latest news. Not um, too old, not too new, but it, around the time within the inauguration of Joe Biden and, you know, um, all the drama that's been going on with that in the Capitol, stuff like that. Just found some interesting headlines. I've been talking a little bit on and off in the past that, you know, this Trump thing was, was just a deception. And I know in a few videos I had uh, pushed that, um, you know, Trump might, you know, I did one video where I was thinking that maybe um, through Trump they were going to bring in their, I don't know, uh, kind of a theocratic right-wing New World Order. I had one video where I was pushing that, but I also said, too, that it's possible that, you know, that's not true, entirely true, but that he was just another puppet of, of theirs. But the whole QAnon thing that was picking up, too, I, I said was a uh, just a deception. Uh, I know many people watch this or believe that. So I'm reading some of the news concerning some of this stuff. So I want to start with Yahoo News. Had this headline. As Trump departs office, reality sets in for QAnon cult. Notice how they're calling it a cult. So this was uh, January 20th. It began with a cryptic remark by President Trump at a photo op with senior military leaders in October 2017. You guys know what this represents? Trump asked the reporters he had summoned to the state dining room, gesturing to the officers arrayed beside him. Maybe it's the calm before the storm. Unquote. No one, evidently including the generals in attendance, seemed to know what he meant. Was it a threat to North Korea, a warning to Iran or ISIS? Trump and later, and later his then press secretary Sarah Sanders refused to elaborate. Quote, he certainly doesn't want to lay out his game plan for our enemies, unquote, Sanders declared. But within a few weeks, an explanation for the remark began to take shape in the shadows of the Internet. On a right-wing message board where someone who called himself Q... The designation uh, for top secret clearance for the depart from the Department of Energy, which supervises America's nuclear arsenal, begins spinning out a Barack paranoid fantasy and elliptical coded hints known as quote unquote crumbs. The core myth, elaborated over the next three years with contributions from a burgeoning cadre of followers, was that Trump was planning the destruction of a worldwide ring of Satanist pedophiles that included, in various versions, deep state bureaucrats, global financial elites, prominent Democrats, and inevitably, Jews. Well, we know that, uh, take a break here for a second, because I have to throw in that, you know, Trump was the biggest uh, pro-Jew, pro-Israel guy out there, as far as president. So I don't know where they're getting their idea that, um, Yeah, anyways, we know it's just stupid propaganda. Although there are theories about the identity of Q, none of which involve a top national security official, he or she remains anonymous, and so do most of Q's followers, since the name QAnon. The fantasy ended at noon on January 20th, when Joe Biden took the oath of office, while the erstwhile QAnon hero, now just Donald Trump, Ex-president skulked off to his estate in Florida without even a Twitter account to his name. For some, the charade had ended two weeks earlier with the chaotic riot at the Capitol, at which Q followers were well represented. That failed to stop the counting of electoral votes certifying Biden's victory, or at various other milestones along the torturous road that led from the November 3rd election, Q had gone mostly silent, silent since then, and followers had to fall back on reassuring each other that Trump was just biding his time before unleashing the storm on an ever-growing list of enemies, eventually including members of his own administration. 
Trust the plan was the mantra of true believers. Just think, one posted hopefully on January 19th. And unfortunately, you guys just ate your own words. You don't just trust something that you got on a message board. Just think, you're right. Take your own, whoever posted that, take your own advice. Yeah, just think. Trump was controlled opposition. Today and tomorrow will be holidays for your children. But as the clock ticked down to noon on Wednesday, Cube message boards began filling with increasingly desperate posts from followers who claimed to have gone without sleep for as long as six days, not wanting to miss the moment they had been waiting and hoping for, for years. Quote, please God, I'm watching. It's making me sick to my stomach, but I want to see arrests, unquote, one wrote. Quote, either arrests happen or we are now China's property, unquote, wrote another. And as Biden prepared to take the oath a few minutes before 12 p.m. ET, despair turned to anger even at Trump himself. Quote, thanks, Trump, unquote, read one post. You sold out our country. Well... I mean, our country's been sold out for <laughs> way before Trump. But okay. And what will probably be the closest thing to an official conclusion to the Q saga? Ron Watkins, the former administrator of the 8KUN eight eight board, which hosted Q, posted a conciliatory message to Telegram shortly after Biden's inauguration ceremony telling followers, quote, we keep our chins up and go back to our lives as best as we are able, unquote. We have a new president sworn in, and it is our responsibility as citizens to respect the Constitution regardless of whether or not we agree with the specifics or details regarding officials who are sworn in, unquote. The message continued, and the Constitution's been shredded a long time ago, as far as I'm concerned. I don't know why they even bring that up anymore. Really? We have a Bill of Rights now? With the mandates, the lockdowns, the uh, fact that most places you can't go anywhere without wearing a face diaper. Yeah. I mean, why even bring up the Constitution anymore? I mean, it's, yeah, I want to restore it, like these guys. But putting your whole faith in Trump, a guy who said a lot of convincing stuff and good stuff. Um, at the same time, he was showing subtly who who he was really doing, who he was really working for. Um, he was working for the Brotherhood, doing their bidding, whether it was... Yeah, anyways, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing and, you know to get my channel another strike but yeah let's just say uh look up revelation chapter 2 verse 9 and revelation chapter 3 verse 9 <laughs> and you'll see who i'm talking about there um who he was working for okay in an effort to perhaps reassure followers that all is not completely lost watkins added I'll have more to say in a few days regarding a new project I'm currently fleshing out before concluding the message with God bless. Yeah. Watkins and his father Jim, who owns 8 Kun, I'm, I'm pronouncing 8, eight Kun because it's spelled 8, you know, K U N together. The anonymous message board that has hosted Q's posts for years played an integral role in facilitating the QAnon phenomena leading some to suspect that the two were actually behind the Q persona, a theory both have previously denied. Well, we know controlled opposition was behind that. But anyways. On Election Day 2020, hours after Q posted what would end up being one of their last drops, Ron Watkins announced he was stepping down as the administrator of 8KUN. In the weeks that followed, he emerged as a prominent source of a wide range of baseless election fraud conspiracy theories, and, um, yeah, his particularly aggressive promotion of false claims relating to 
Dominion voting systems earned him several appearances on the far right wing One America News Network, an expert witness citation in one of Sidney Powell's unsuccessful Kraken lawsuits and a retweet from Trump. It's too early to say where QAnon will rank in the long history of human delusion. Its reach was wide, but comparatively shallow, compared, say, with the Heaven's Gate cult, whose three dozen or so members committed mass suicide in 1997, believe, believing they would be transported to an alien spaceship tracking comet hale Bop as it approached Earth. Strong beliefs aren't necessarily shaken by failed prophecies. Armageddon has been confidently predicted innumerable times since the book of Revelation was accepted into the, into the biblical canon. Anyways, yeah, um, you can read what's the rest of the article. There wasn't really much to go, but I just wanted to read the, 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 the meat of the article anyways. It's right there. Uh, if you can, can you see that? It's like bright. So it's Yahoo News. I'm reading from my old, old tablet, you know. Um, so, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, I wanted to read. This is also from BBC News. Biden inauguration leaves QAnon believers in disarray. So, you know, you got that guy right there. We know that guy's a shill, an actor, Jake and Jelly. <laughs> Followers of the baseless QAnon conspiracy theory are divided after Joe Biden's inauguration confounded their predictions that Donald Trump would remain president in order to punish his enemies in the deep state. Many reacted with shock and despair as Joe Biden was sworn in as the 46th U.S. president. Quote, I just want to throw up, quote, Unquote, said one in a popular chat on the Telegram messaging app. I'm so sick of all the disinformation and false hope. Well, you know what, buddy? That is why you don't share, spread stuff you can't prove on a message board or anything else. Only spread and share the truth. What's documented. Or stuff like this would not happen. But anyways, others insisted the plan had not failed, finding new theories to latch on to. For weeks, QAnon followers have been promoting January 20th as a day of reckoning when prominent Democrats and other elite satanic pedophiles would be arrested and executed on the orders of Donald Trump, President Trump. But as Mr. Biden took his oath and no arrests were made, some in the QAnon community had an uncomfortable meeting with reality. Quote, it's done, and we were played, unquote, wrote another. <laughs> yeah, you were played. And, you know, there's a new one coming out, uh, I guess, uh, that he he's going to basically take office in March, uh, in March 4th of this year. So, yeah. Um, just wanted to show how much BS and how much I've been trying to warn people of, you know, disinformation and its dangers. That's why I did those past videos where I tried to show that I did a couple where there was some misquotes, very popular misquotes from Masonic authors, attributed to Masonic authors and, and others. And I, and I warned that, well, this is a way that, this is a good way to discredit us. QAnon thing is a major example of that, where um, now in the mass mind, every single time now, because it's embedded in their consciousness, because you know the Communist News Network or CNN um, post stories and stuff on um, how you know anyone who pushes this, a secret cabal conspiracy is a part of the QAnon thing. So it's in their conscience mind, and so every time. You talk about it now, many people are going to make that link and they're going to think that you also put pushed the QAnon in the past and that was long been discredited. So now it's even harder to get, you know, the masses woken up now because, um, you know, while, uh, okay, I'll admit there's some good number of people that are, that have woken up, but still there's a good number of that kind of people out there, so... Um, 
my attempt at at a you know sheep noise. <laughs> um, but you know, the, you get my point. Is that there's a lot of people now who are. It's going to be a lot more harder to wake him up now. I'll just say that because because of all this uh, controlled opposition. But here's one from Fortune on the Capitol uh, riots. Uh, they're now using this, and it's pretty obvious the reason why. I I try to make some videos. I, I just haven't got around to to make the time, but. I was following this, and right when it happened, I said, yep, this is a good way of, you know, giving the New World Order the justification and their media and stuff to start labeling us terrorists. And um, anyone who talks about conspiracy theories is potentially linked with terrorist groups, and this will be used to suppress more uh, free speech. Um, but anyways, here's Fortune had this headline, The Capitol Insurrectionists and ISIS have a lot in common. Domestic terrorism is the top threat to the homeland. Following the Capitol riot earlier this month, Congress has taken actions against those it holds responsible. House Democrats have committed to sending the article of impeachment to the Senate on Monday, and Democratic leaders are pushing new domestic terrorism legislation. Gee, I wonder what this domestic terrorism bill is all about. Last fall, this is on the bill, the U.S. House of Representatives passed the Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act by a bipartisan voice vote U.S. Senator Ron Johnson from Wisconsin blocked the bill from going to the Senate. I can guarantee you, uh, maybe we need to, maybe I need to find that bill and read it. I didn't, but um, the article that I'm getting this from is from uh, the local news, News 3, WSIL, so it's WSILTV.com. Lawmakers joined Durbin to support domestic terrorism bill. You can guarantee it in there. It's uh, this is a link to House.gov. Racially, ethnically motivated, violent extremists were the primary source. I'm I'm reading from. Um, a speech by uh, Brad Schneider, Representative Brad Schneider, sorry, but anyways. Racially, ethnically motivated violent extremists were the primary source of ideologically motivated lethal incidents of violence in 2018 and 2019. From the Tree of Life Synagogue to a Walmart in El Paso, Texas, we have all tragically seen the deadly effect. According to the Southern Poverty Law Center, the number of white nationalist groups rose by 55% since 2017. Last November, the FBI reported violent hate crimes reached a 16-year high in 2018. So, um, where does it start talking about uh, anyone who talks about a secret cabal? But anyways, you can look this up. I wanted to get to the main articles that I've been. Uh, this is uh, schneider.house.gov. House passes Schneider Durbin Bipartisan Domestic Terrorism Prevention Act, DTPA. So, anyways, so we know where they're going with this. There, again, it's that problem reaction solution. You create a chaotic situation or a terrorist attack, and then the government uses that terrorist attack, like 9/11 for an example, exploit it to uh, basically take our rights and freedoms away from us and create more of a surveillance state. As Rahm Emanuel said, uh, never let a good crisis go to waste. You know, So we can already see they're calling them insurrectionists, and, and I heard in the news actually the, these capital stormers being referred to as uh, insurgents. I haven't heard that word being used since... Um, I haven't heard that word being used since the... Uh, in the news during the I Iraqi invasion. 
You know, I'm calling them people over there in, in Afghanistan too, uh, insurgents. So, yep, definitely beginning to try to make a move on getting people to be convinced that conspiracy theorists are terrorists. But I got some things on this capital thing. I'm thinking it might have been a um, false flag. This is your news. You make of it what, what you want, uh, I guess. But yournews.com. This is a headline. By the way, I go to duckduckgo.com to get a lot of my information in the search engine. Search engine. Google likes to hide everything. It's dangerous to its agenda. Anyways. False flag confirmed. False flag confirmed Viking who stormed a Capitol building previously photographed at BLM rally wearing the same outfit. I first seen this guy um, in an article I was reading in the Arizona Central on Bill Cooper Behold a Pale Horse and, and QAnon. They were trying to link Bill Cooper and, 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 and Behold a Pale Horse as planting the seeds for the later QAnon movement. And you know, I just knew it was just propaganda garbage. But anyways... Um, this is Mike Adams, Natural News. Anyways, that's... The storming of the U.S. Capitol building today is now being pounced upon by the left-wing media to demonize Trump supporters as violent terrorists. Yet the same media outlets described Antifa BLM violence as mostly peaceful, even when those left-wing actors were hurling Molotov cocktails and wielding blinding lasers against law enforcement. And this is an update on here. We have now confirmed that the storming of the Capitol building was initiated by left-wing provocateurs who met with Capitol Police yesterday and planned the event. A photo has emerged of the Viking individual who led the storming action below, shown on the right side of the photo. This same person wearing the same outfit and nearly identical face paint was also reportedly spotted at a Black Lives Matter rally earlier this year. Note the identical tattoos, facial hair, and costume. It's right there. So, a flyer has also emerged that calls upon Atifa to dress up like mag, um, mega supporters, let's make America great again, supporters, in order to impersonate them while instigating the violence. I'll show you that little flyer, if you can read that. Hmm. Election Day nears, comrades. Prepare to defend your rights, Antifa comrades. On November 4th, don't forget to disguise yourselves as patriots, Trump supporters. Wear mega hats, USA flags, three percenter insignias. A convincing police uniform is even better. This way, police and patriots responding to us won't know who their enemies are, and onlookers in the media will think there are Trump supporters rioting, so it's harder to turn popular opinion against us. And, you know, I'm not, I guess we'll see where this goes. Um, this looks pretty legit. Um, but again, with all the disinformation out there, I would exercise uh, some discernment and make sure that you check all this out. I'm not perfect either. I can make mistakes. So, the only violence committed today was the Capitol Police shooting reportedly killing an unarmed female Trump supporter who was shot in the neck. It's the police, in other words, who are committing the violence, not Trump supporters. Given that leftists have rigged everything else, and uh, the media, big tech, the elections, U.S. history, well, we need to stop with the leftists versus the rightist. We know the cabal, the brotherhood have rigged everything else. And they own the media, the big techs, the elections, U.S. history. So, yeah, in that respect, yeah, no one would be surprised if they also rigged the events of the Capitol building. But he does make a point. Most of the Trump supporters are not your violent types, you know, like your BLMs and Antifas. Most of them do support law enforcement. They're law-abiding. I know many, so uh, mostly behavior like 
violent behavior is always coming from, you know, the radical left groups. So, yep, that had that headline that Jake and Jelly, I knew he was an actor or an agent, and it turns out he was an actor. So, um, anyways, uh, this is some natural news. Had this headline. Major events show CNN complicit in Capitol raid. After infiltrating the Capitol on January 6th while dressed as a Trump supporter, far-left extremist John Sullivan was interviewed by CNN's Anderson Cooper, who promoted Sullivan's work and referred to him as a journalist, despite lacking any credentials. Not only that, but John Sullivan was later arrested for his involvement in the siege, as it appears that he was led inside the gate by law enforcement. Nobody actually stormed the building, in other words. Since appearing on CNN, John Sullivan admitted in sworn affidavits that he incited violence. John Sullivan was heard screaming, quote, We gotta get this SHIT burned, unquote. While inside the Capitol, he also yelled, quote, We did this together, unquote, after breaching the final barricade surrounding the building. John Sullivan also just so happened to film the murder of Ashley Babbitt by Capitol Police. Quote, I don't want to see people get hurt unnecessarily, especially when there should be, like, a better way to go about it, unquote, John Sullivan announced on CNN, unopposed by Cooper. Quote, so I told everybody they're willing to go peacefully, just go put down their arms, unquote. Well, Anderson Cooper did introduce John Sullivan as a left-wing activist. He failed to disclose that John Sullivan heads up an anti-fascist terrorist group called Insurrection USA, whose members have engaged in far worse than what took place at the Capitol. Back in August, John Sullivan himself was heard outside the White House calling for his comrades to, quote, rip Trump out of that office. He further threatened to get that mother effer, unquote. Quote, we gotta effing rip Trump out of that office right over there. Effing pull him out of that SHIT. Nah, nah, we ain't about effing waiting till the next election. We about to get that mother eff effer. I ain't about that SHIT because you know what time it is. I want you all to repeat after me. It's time for a revolution. It's time for a revolution. It's time for a revolution. Unquote. Another CNN employee, Jade Sacker, participated in the siege and bragged about it on camera. While penetrating the Capitol barricades with her BLM and Antifa comrades, John Jade Sacker was heard screaming, We did it! She then asked if her co-conspirator was filming the incident, to which he responded in the affirmative, promising to delete the footage. This individual did not delete it, though, and it is now circulating on Twitter for how long is anyone's guess. To make this clear, CNN, or Communist News Network, was embedded with BLM and Tifa pretending to be Trump supporters videoing them to incite a riot. So, you know, you can read that. rest of that. Um, naturalnews.com Article. I know Alex Jones is uh, not one to be uh, trusted, and um, but sometimes I'll look on there because um, he does in the mix of all the disinformation, as they all do. You know, there's a lot of truth and stuff. So sometimes I do, and as long as I check it out. But Infowars had this headline: "The war on terror has gone domestic, and patriots are the new targets." And they're, they're getting it from naturalnews.com anyways by Ethan Huff. January 22nd of this year. Many of our longtime readers will recall the repeated warnings we issued over the years about the deep state plot to vilify all conservatives and patriots as terrorists. It started with the war on terror against foreigners that was launched immediately after 9-11 and is now coming full circle following the Capitol riot on January 6th to include Americans. It is now considered an act of domestic terrorism for at least half of America to merely protest, uh, a categorization that simply would not have been possible apart from the Patriot Act and all the social engineering that came along with it. 
Nearly two decades later, what appears to have been the true intent of this law co is coming into view, to destroy those who wish to live in a sovereign republic rather than a globalist democracy. In order to maintain a safe and secure society, we are told that civil liberties in the Bill of Rights have to go. Allowing them could lead to another insurrection, after all, and that would be just be scary. So, you know, I mean, you can read the rest of that article if you like, or the, go to the original source, which is Natural News. So... So, you know, I, the idea of false flags, you know, many people you talk to, just like the, my, my last video, I made the argument that to people who, you know, think that, well, our government would never, you know, poison us with, you know, food, water, vaccines and stuff like that. And I did that video to show all the cases and in, in our past and history where the government has definitely and the army has de definitely engaged in that the intelligence agencies, to the military, and that they did it before, they'll do it again. Well, same thing with the false flag here. Um, so I want to read a little bit from history.co.uk. The truth about false flags from Nazi Germany to the Vietnam War. This is interesting. This is what happened in Nazi Germany. On the night of the 31st of August, 1939, several covert Nazi operatives dressed as Polish, Polish soldiers stormed the Gleiwitz, that's spelled G-L-E-I-W-I-T-Z, uh, Gleiwitz, or Gleiwitz, radio tower on the Germany-Poland border. They broadcast a short anti-German message in Polish before leaving. The soldiers left behind the bodies of a pro Polish, German farmer, and several unidentifiable Dachau concentration camp prisoners. The farmer and the prisoners have been murdered and dressed up in German uniforms. The attack was part of a series of covert actions along the Polish border that the Nazis would use to justify Germany's attack on Poland the following day. Glaywitz was a classic false flag operation. So, um... One of the most famous incidents considered by many to be a false flag operation is the Ragstag, Ragstag Fire, which took place on the night of the 27th of February, 1933. A lone communist sympathizer called Marinus Vanderloop was arrested and charged with setting fire to the German parliament building. This gave Hitler and his propaganda minister, Joseph Goebbels, the excuse they needed to purge Germany of opposition, especially the communists. Sound familiar? The sweeping emergency powers Hitler and the Nazi party grabbed for themselves after the fire are the reasons many people think the Reichstag was burned not by a lone communist protesting Germany's treatment of the working classes, as van der Loop himself claimed while in custody, but by the Nazis themselves. The United States and Great Britain jointly organized false flag operations during the 1953 Iranian coup. Of course, it isn't just the Nazis who stand accused of carrying out false flag operations prior to invasions during the 1930s. In November 1939, the Russian village of Manila was shelled by an unknown party. The village was close to the border with Finland, and the attack was used as an excuse to break the Soviet Union's non-aggression pact with the country and launch an invasion into Finland that would later become known as the Winter War. It was eventually concluded by both British and Russian historians that the shelling of the village was a false flag operation carried out by members of the NKVD, the predecessors to the KJB. As a result of the war between the Soviets and the Finns, Finland sided with Nazi Germany in World War II. False flag operations carried on throughout the war, but most can be considered to be in the old sense of the word. One of the most famous false flag operations of World War II was the raid on the French dry dock of St. Nazaire, that's spelled N-A-Z-A-I-R-E. The raid on the French dry dock of St. Nazaire. There, British commandos managed to float an explosives-laden Old Royal Navy destroyer fitted out to look like a German torpedo boat 
close enough to the harbor to destroy all key structures in the port upon the destroyer's detonation. After the war, the United States and Great Britain jointly organized false flag operations during the 1953 Iranian coup. The aim of the operations carried out in the country was to deliberately undermine the government of Prime Minister Mohammad Mosaddegh. Mosaddegh had made the mistake of nationalizing Iran's oil companies. This angered the U.S. and the U.K., who jointly decided to launch a series of bombing campaigns against mosques and prominent people that they then blamed on communists, sympathetic to the government. Protests grew against Mosaddegh, egged on by the CIA, MI6, and Mosaddegh was eventually fired from his post by the Shah of Iran and placed under house arrest. He would stay there until his death in 1967. The U.S. refused to admit any involvement in the overthrow of Mosaddegh until 2000. 13. While questions still hang over the Ragstag fire, one planned operation from the early 1960s would definitely have been a false flag had it not been stopped in its tracks. tracks. Operation Northwoods was the name given to a proposed covert campaign by the CIA that would have seen acts of terrorism committed against targets and civilians in the United States that could then be blamed on Cuban, operative, Cuban operatives as a precursor to an invasion of Cuba and the removal of Fidel Castro. Northwoods was proposed to the U.S. President John F. Kennedy, but he rejected the idea. And of course, I have in my possession the actual Northwoods document, National Security Archives. Read that. Signed by the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The Joint Chiefs of Staff have considered the attached memorandum for the Chief of Operations Cuba Project, which responds to a request of that office for brief but precise description of pretexts which would provide justification for U.S. military intervention in Cuba. So there you go. Okay. Want to, I just want to read just a little bit on what they were wanting to do here, some of the scenarios. So there you go. Uh, this is a part of it. This is uh, right here. Um, this plan should be developed to focus all efforts on a specific ultimate objective which would provide adequate justification for U.S. military intervention. Such a plan would enable a logical buildup of incidents to be combined with other seemingly unrelated events to camouflage the ultimate objective and create the necessary impression of Cuban rashness and irresponsibility on a large scale directed at other countries as well as the United States. This plan would also properly integrate and time phase the courses of, of action to be pursued. The desired resultant from the execution of this plan would be to place the United States in the apparent position of suffering defensible grievances from a rash and irresponsible government of Cuba and to develop an interna international image of a Cuban threat to peace in the Western Hemisphere. So there you go. I want to read a little bit of that. Go ahead. Try to see if you can see that. I marked my everything I read. I already showed you that. So, here's some of the things they were planning on doing. Since it would seem desirable to use legitimate provocation as the basis for U.S. military intervention in Cuba, a cover and deception plan to include requisite preliminary actions, such as has been developed in response to Task 33O, could be executed as an initial effort to provoke Cuban reactions. Harassment plus deceptive actions to convince the Cubans of imminent invasion will be emphasized. A series of well-coordinated incidents will be planned to take place in and around Cub 
Guantanamo to give genuine appearance of being done by Cuban hostile being done by hostile Cuban forces. Incidents to establish a credible attack, not in chronological order. One, start rumors, many use clandestine radio. Two, land friendly Cubans in uniform, quote, over the fence, unquote, to stage attack on base. Three, capture Cuban friendly saboteurs inside the base. Four, start riots near the base main gate. Friendly Cubans, they were thinking of starting riots, you know. So if you, you suggest that the riots that were going on in the past with all this current rioting that was going on with the BLM and stuff like that, that all this is staged, you're called the conspiracy theorist. Well, right here in a government document, classified, they had signed by the Joint Chiefs of Staff, who at the time was uh, um, L.L. Lem, Lemnitzer. Yeah. You know, it's an official document where they were wanting to do that, except, you know, blame Cuba. Five, blow up ammunition inside the base, start fires. Six, burn aircraft on air base, sabotage. Seven, lob mortar shells from outside of base into base, some damage to installations. Eight, capture assault teams approaching from the sea or vicinity of Guantanamo, of Guantanamo City. Nine, capture militia group which storms the base. Ten, sabotage ships, ship and harbor, large fires. 11. Sink ships near harbor entrance. Conduct funerals for mock victims. For mock victims. Hmm. A remember the main incident could be arranged in several forms. A. We could blow up a U.S. ship at Guantanamo Bay and blame Cuba. Want to read that? So I'm not, don't think I'm making it up. Oh, but our loving government would never do such a thing in the future. No, this is just something that, you know, you know, Kennedy stopped it, and then right after that, they just decided, well, we're never going to do this ever again, or want to do it again. Yeah, right. Give me a break. B, we could blow up a drone unmanned vessel anywhere in the Cuban waters. We could arrange to cause such incident in the vicinity of Havana or Santiago as a spectacular result of Cuban attack from the air or sea, or both. The presence of Cuban planes or ships merely investigating the intent of the vessel could be fairly compelling evidence that the ship was taken under attack. The nearness to Havana or Santiago would add credibility, especially to those people that might have heard the blast or have seen the fire. The U.S. could follow up with an air-sea rescue operation covered by U.S. fighters to evacuate remaining members of the non-existent crew. Casualty lists in U.S. newspapers would cause a helpful wave of national indignation. So casualty list. There you go. Uh, we could develop a communist Cuban terror campaign in the Miami area and other Florida cities and even in Washington. The terror campaign could be pointed at Cuban refugees seeking haven in the United States. We could sink a boatload of Cubans en route to Florida, real or simulated. You know, just, you know, it's just a conspiracy, so, you know, it just doesn't exist. The uh, sheeple will tell you that. But we could foster attempts on lives of Cuban refugees in the United States, even to the extent of wounding in instances to be widely publicized. Exploding a few plastic bombs in carefully chosen spots, the arrest of Cuban agents, and the release of prepared documents substantiating Cuban involvement also will be helpful in projecting the idea of an irresponsible government. Um, and there is a... Down here, I'm just going over the most uh, revealing stuff in here. Use of MIG type aircraft by U.S. pilots could provide additional provocation. Harassment of civil air, attacks on surface shipping, and destruction of U.S. military drone aircraft by MIG type planes would be useful as complementary actions. An F 86 properly painted would convince air passengers that they saw a Cuban MIG, especially if the pilot of the transport were. To announce such fact. You know, and just... Hijacking attempts against civil air and surface craft should appear to continue as harassing measures condoned by the government of Cuba. <laughs> Concurrently, genuine defections of Cuban civil and military air and surface craft should be encouraged. 
It is possible to create an incident which will demonstrate convincingly that a Cuban aircraft has attacked and shot down a chartered civil airliner en route from the United States to Jamaica, Guatemala, Panama, or Venezuela. The destination would be chosen only to cause the, the flight plan route to cross Cuba. The passengers could be a group of college students off on a holiday or any grouping of persons with a common interest to support chartering an unscheduled flight. An aircraft at Agelin Air Force Base would be painted and numbered as an exact duplicate for a civil registered aircraft belonging to a CIA pro proprietary organization in the Miami area. At a designated time, the duplicate would be substituted for the actual civil aircraft and would be loaded with the selected passengers, all boarded under carefully prepared aliases. The actual registered aircraft would be co converted to a drone. Takeoff times of the drone aircraft and the actual aircraft will be scheduled to allow a rendezvous south of Florida. From the rendezvous point, the passenger carrying aircraft will descend to minimum altitude and go directly into an auxiliary field at an Ageland Air Force Base where arrangements will have been made to evacuate the passengers and return the aircraft to its original status. The drone aircraft, meanwhile, will continue to fly the filed flight plan. When over Cuba, the drone will be in will be in transmitting on the international distress frequency a mayday message stating he is under attack by Cuban MIG aircraft. The transmission will be interrupted by destruction of the aircraft which will be triggered by radio signal. This will allow ICAO radio stations in the western hemisphere to tell the U.S. what has happened to the aircraft instead of the U.S. trying to sell the incident. It is possible to create an incident which will make it appear that communist Cuban MIGs have destroyed a United States Air Force aircraft over international waters in an unprovoked attack. So, I can let you read this page, and you can, of course, find this and read it yourself, too. Print it off like I did before... You know, they just start clamping down on everything on the internet and getting rid of everything, and then they can control, completely control the narrative. Let's call everything a conspiracy theory. Well, you know. That's why it's important you use documented things like this and not freaking stupid QAnon BS. You see that? I'm sorry. Hopefully you can read this. I'll see when I finish with this video here. So, can pause that. So, the remaining time I wanted to show, I've collected a little bit of articles here and there on false flag, you know, stories, but um, even going back all the way to Pearl Harbor, like this was a headline on Daily, Mo Daily Mail, December of 2011, so 10 years ago, just about. Nine years now. Had this headline revealed the declassified memo that warned FDR, who was a Freemason, by the way, of Hawaii attack three days before Pearl Harbor strike. So, you know, you never shown in the movies before this came out and everything that they were, you know, given a warning on anything. This is just a surprise attack. A freshly declassified memo is shedding new light on a possible tip-off of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor and the White House's slow reaction to it. Well, isn't that convenient? Now, gee, I wonder why. To get us into World War II, order up chaos so they can create their United Nations. So, um, of course, we'll never get the full truth on that. And another source, Telegraph, also reported on that. Pearl Harbor memo shows U.S. warned of Japanese attack. So. I just want to get to these, to these things uh, and briefly show you it. Uh. I remember this article, and I'm not going to mention too much because uh, I know that the algorithms of YouTube and Google, whatever, they'll 
I might say a couple things and hopefully I don't get a strike already with what I've been talking about but don't get this video taken down but I printed this off most definitely you remember this this was uh September 23rd 2001 a little bit after that event but uh can read a little bit of that sorry so BBC so I'll just uh, pause that and whatever Let me come out of it. Um, there's another one, Mail Online. Had that headline. Um, the terrorist leader, linked to hijackers, was invited to the Pentagon for lunch after attacks. And so, you know, I mean... All these are prob just the most pro probable cause like s situations that are revealed that anybody, you know, any any investigator, like if I had this much like little things that, that, that are very suspicious red flags that it would constitute probable cause and it would constitute, an, it would demand an investigation. And yet you're called a conspiracy theorist for, you know, looking this stuff up and finding all these little facts and well there's one that happened in history too called the Levon affair how a false flag operation led to war with an Israeli bomb in 1954 Israeli military intelligence often known by its Hebrew abbreviation AMAN A -M -A -N, activated a sleeper cell that had been tasked with setting off a series of bombs in Egypt in this risky operation, a small number of Egyptian Jews were to bomb Western and Egyptian institutions in Egypt, hoping the attacks could be blamed on Egyptian opponents of the country's leader, Gamal Abdel Nasser, including members of the Muslim Brotherhood or the Communist Party. The ensuing chaos, it apparently was hoped, would persuade Western governments that Gamal Abdel Nasser's, gov Nasser's regime was unstable and therefore unworthy of financial and other support. So... The operation started with the bombing of the Alexandria Post Office, and within a matter of weeks, six other buildings in Alexandria and Cairo also were targeted. But the Egyptian government was apparently told about the next bombing target, and the bomber was arrested. Eventually, Egyptian security rolled up the entire Israeli cell. The failed operation became a scandal and blame for the ill-conceived attempt. It's still not officially settled. And, of course, you have the USS Liberty. And, um... Many there, the survivors, you go, you go look them up, of course, they, 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 they say that, you know, is Israel knew dang well that that was our ship that they had, you know, shot down and everything. And just look it up. Uh, of course, go to DuckDuckGo or some other search engine because maybe Google will probably hide it from us. During the 1954 to 1955 trial of the bombers, Pinhas Lavon, Israel's Minister of Defense, was painted as having approved the sabotage campaign, and Lavon's political enemies at home echoed the charge in early inquiries into the matter. Subsequent Israeli investigations suggest that Lavon was framed to divert attention from other Israeli leaders, but the incident was retained the name given at the time, the Lavon Affair. The so conceived false flag operation failed embarrassingly to accomplish its goal of undermining. The, uh, you know, the leader of Egypt, uh, the Nasser. The Levon affair also played a major role in setting in motion a chain of events that led to Israel's acquisition of nuclear weapons via scientific and military cooperation with France. Narratives of the affair, including this one, are hampered by, the, by Israeli government secrecy and the failure thus far of those who organized and ordered its execution to reveal publicly their innermost thinking about it. But regardless of the details of how the Levon affair came about, the affair triggered events that accelerated the Israeli bomb program. Even absent the Levon affair, Israel would almost certainly have obtained the bomb. 
but the path to it would have been longer and more difficult with an unpredictable impact on the power dynamics of the entire Middle East. And, you know, if you want to look this up, if you still got it, this is a long time. Bulletin of the Atomic Science Scientist by Leonard Weiss. So... Well, I've kind of run out of the false flake stuff for now. I, I might do another uh, another one here, but you know, people just deny propaganda exists, you know. But I have this book by Edward Bernays. Who is Edward Bernays? Um, the nephew of Sigmund Freud, Edward Bernays, eighteen ninety one to nineteen ninety five, pioneered the scientific technique of shaping and manipulating public opinion, which he called engineering of consent. During World War I, he was an integral part, along with Walter Lippmann of the U.S. Committee on Public Information, a powerful propaganda machine that advertised and sold the war to make the people, the American people as one that would make the world safe for democracy. The marketing strategies for all future wars would be based on the CPI model. Over the next half century, Edward Bernays, combining the techniques he had learned in the CPI with the ideas of Walter Lippmann and Sigmund Freud, fashioned a career as an outspoken proponent of propaganda for political and corporate manipulation of the population, earning the moniker Father of Public Relations. Among his powerful clients were President Calvin Coolidge, Procter & Gamble, CBS, the American Tobacco Company, and General Electric. In addition, his propaganda campaign for the United Fruit Company in the early 50s led directly to the CIA's overthrow of the elected government of Guatemala. So there you go. So this is his own book here. I'll get past the introduction here because I think I, he says some very interesting things in this book here. And it's the very first chapter of, called Organizing Chaos. The conscience and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed, our minds molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested, largely by men we have never heard of. And he says, you know, below here, vast numbers of human beings must cooperate in this manner if they are to live together as a smoothly functioning society. So... You know, this propaganda, you know, of course, you want to read that? No fake quotes for me. And he says some other things, too. The minority has discovered, this is page, the very first uh, page of chapter 11, page 47, the minority has discovered a powerful help in influencing majorities. It has found possible so to mold the mind of the masses that they will throw their newly gained strength in the desired direction. In the present structure of society, this practice is inevitable. Whatever of social importance is done today, whether in politics, finance, manufacture, agriculture, charity, education, or other fields, must be done with the help of propaganda. Propaganda is the executive arm of the invisible government. No, well, but it's just a conspiracy theory. It doesn't exist. Well, one of our major propagandists in U.S. history, his own book, said it. An invisible government. Yep, so... And there's a whole bunch. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to make a video where I'm reading from this book. I'm almost, almost out of time here. But um, I wanted to... Uh, it is not a conspiracy theory to, to do, know that secret societies and... Or, and obviously I did a 
lot of videos on that subject. I'm trying to look. Let me, um... I always like to use that quote, but maybe I think... I thought I had it on this table here, but... I don't know. Oh, whatever. I think I'll just, uh... There we go. I always I have read from this book numerous times here. But I think the reason why I like to use this book, well, the author, R. Swimer Clymer, is a very controversial figure. Uh, he also wrote this book, uh, which is very interesting that he wrote this book, by the way, The Age of Treason, because um, I'll just give you the title page. You can read this on archive.org if you like. But um, he, uh, it's a very interesting, because this whole book, he exposes the whole globalist plan of dumbing us down and chemically poisoning us and, um, yeah, just uh, enslaving us in a new, new world order in, run by the UN. Um, I might make it a time, I don't know if YouTube would have let me read it without taking my video down, but you can go to archive.org and read it, if you like. Uh, there is some still, I mean... Granted, he is an Illuminati Grand Master, you know, uh, the Rosicrucian Order here in Pennsylvania. He, at the same time, he, you know, it makes me wonder after reading this. I don't, uh, I, I don't know. I'm just a researcher. But anyways, he said this on page uh, 222, so it makes me wonder, you know, why would he push for a new world order, but then, you know, expose it like in this book years later? I, I don't know. But anyways... Like, this is an example of real news and not conspiracy theory. We have entered this new cycle, the new age. There is a new interpretation and application of the old laws. In this new age now before us, every man must assume personal responsibility without the thought of evasion for all his acts and must, accept, must accept the fact of a karmic reaction for all that he does. And then it goes down here, a little bit further down. This is the age of a new world order, the establishment of brotherhood, and the elimination of all retarding forces. The new age is upon us. Either we harmonize with it and its laws, or we shall be destroyed by it. Our is the choice. I like to show this quote quite a bit, and it is right uh, there. Find the new world order. So you have a secret society, and I have many books from secret societies talking about this coming new world order long before the politicians called for it. So, uh, so whatever you want to think of, climber or whatever, it certainly shows that, you know, secret societies are behind the thing. And he had held a convocation, by the way, in uh, this book here, where he said in this convocation that, um, at this, a convocation was to convene on June 1st, 1916. The neophyte body was to be informed of a crisis that would be the beginning of the enslavement of the people of America in a manner so insidious that they would not be aware of it. America was to become engaged in a war that would be only the beginning of greater wars. It was prophesied that an effort would be made to destroy the Christian religion so secretly and silently that only the alert and elect would be aware of this activity. This effort is in full bloom today and is making atheists out of millions. Even before their churches are destroyed, the reverse of what has happened, it is happening in other countries. So, you can read that if you... It's got secret societies that our founding fathers, of course, were involved in openly talking about this years ago, 105 years ago. So whatever you want to think of, I, I, I don't know, like I said, I'm just a researcher, but there is certainly proof and evidence that these secret societies, and it's not a conspiracy theory, not one bit, not what I showed you. But make sure that you're not sharing, po uh, circulating fake news, and make sure it can be documented, like kind of what I do here. Um, take care, have a good night.